Yes, uh, is this Pokemon Company's main offices? Yes, yes, well, uh, I would like to speak to the head, please. Yeah, yeah, I am referring to Tsunikazu Ishihara himself, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I, I can hold, no, no problem, uh, thank, thank you very much. All right, looks like I got to the wrong room. Uh, uh. Hey, 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 hold on there for a second. What are you planning on doing with that bat this time around? Oh, the bat? No reason. Are you doing self-defense with Blaine or something, or is Platinum being his usual self? Did he ask about Bayonetta 3 again? Oh, uh, Sonic took care of that, actually. Oh, good for him then. So, then what's the bat for? Actually, I'm going to be taking Campy to the ballpark today. Figured we hit a few swings, some home runs, take a couple of laps around the park, play some Pokemon Go, all that kind of stuff, and... Who are you calling? Oh, on the phone? Oh, I'm calling Pokemon Company. Is this about Pokemon Unite? Because if, if it's about the nerfs of Cinderace and all that kind of stuff, I mean, there's no point calling in them or... Oh, I know what it is. I know why you're calling. I see. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, yes, it is what you're thinking it is. But uh, go have fun with Campy at the ballpark today. Uh, make sure he hits a good few swings here and there, home runs, all that kind of stuff. Oh, and tell Sonic and Blaine to go grocery shopping because I'm going to need all the ingredients for dinner tonight because we are making some curry. Oh, hell yeah! So while we wait for the man himself, the head honcho of the Pokemon company to answer, we're going to be talking about Pokemon today. Yes, yes, indeed what we're going to be talking about. Another Pokemon video. I know I did one on Pokemon Unite last week, but I figured I'd do another one this week because there's just such an unwavered love of Pokemon that is within me right now. Thanks to Pokemon Unite that I just want to do this video in dedication for Pokemon Unite. But if you want me to just talk about exclusively to Pokemon Unite, I did do a video on my overall thoughts on Pokemon Unite. It will be a card pop up somewhere around here. I don't know how YouTube does these things nowadays, but a card should pop up somewhere around here. And if you want to watch Pokemon Unite, there it is right there for you, ladies and gentlemen. But for those that are more interested in today's video topic, this is more in line to the general spin-off series of Pokemon and the reason why I want to do a video dedicated to the spin-off series at least a general sense of them the reason why is because of Pokemon Unite ever since Pokemon Unite came out it made me realize the potential of all of the Game Freaks' spin-offs of Pokemon and seeing how a game like this that at first glance nobody really enjoyed when they were first introducing the series and now it is this massive mobile experience that people are really enjoying. What about the previous spin-off games that we've enjoyed and played while growing up? Did they also have that similar factor or were they just simply good from the beginning? And so I've brought a neat set of specific spin-off series that I think many people will remember and some that are more obscure that people may have remembered back then but don't remember it now until I present it today. And so I figure let's dive right into it, see more or less what made them good or bad, and see what level of potential these games had and are going to have moving forward. You hear that, Pokemon Company? I know you guys are listening on the phone call. I know you guys are. Of course, before we dive into that, let's ask the question here and now, and that is, are the spin-offs better than the original games? And the answer is, not really. They are spin-offs for a reason, and that's because they want to add additional value, whether good or bad value, to the Pokemon franchise. And as much as we love the main title series, the spin-offs do deserve their sense of recognition, despite how good or bad they really are. And in the case of today's video, that is exactly what we're planning to do. So, 
Spin-offs are good and they're also unique in their own right and add the value necessary for the Pokemon franchise. Current examples of adding value to the franchise are Pokemon Go, which was released back in 2016 and added the AR element of catching Pokemon in the real world. And then there's obviously the current Pokemon Masters EX and Pokemon Unite, one of them for mobile and one of them is going to be in mobile in September, but is currently on the Switch. And these add value of a multiplayer style setting of adding online features that obviously has been a given since the DS era, but add more unique value to it and more of a gotcha element in certain cases and pay to win in Unite's, uh, in Unite's case. So clearly there's value to that, but all of the ones prior to that, what exactly were their value to the Pokemon franchise? So the first one are the Mystery Dungeon series. The one that has evolved and adapted the dungeon crawling RPG style with Pokemon in it. So kind of how like Unite utilized the MOBA setting with Pokemon in it. Mystery Dungeon had that same value but with dungeon crawling. And so Mystery Dungeon was a unique concept of you being your own Pokemon whether it was RNG or in the later games, such as Super Mystery Dungeon and then Gates of Infinity, where you were able to choose your own. And also in the remake of the original Rescue Team Blue, Rescue Team Red, Mystery Dungeon DX, there is a sense of being your own Pokemon and exploring the world of Pokemon that doesn't have humans and trainers and all that kind of stuff. And seeing Pokemon talk is something that is, you know, at first glance seems really weird. But the more you play it, the more you enjoy how the, each of these Pokemon have their own unique characteristics other than just saying their name multiple times. And yes, I am calling out the anime for that. They don't really have to do that. They have their own specific sounds for a reason. But then you decided to have Pikachu say Pikachu for the, ever since Generation 6. And I kind of have a personal take with that. You hear? Point is Mystery Dungeon adds value to exploration, adds value to dungeon crawling, and adds value to exploring the realm of Pokemon and characterizing those Pokemon. The reason many of us like certain Pokemon nowadays is because of how much we've played Mystery Dungeon. And specifically to me, like I've the first Pokemon game I've ever played was Mystery Dungeon Explorer of Sky on the DS in 2009. So Clearly there is a little sense of bias for me as to adding Mystery Dungeon first in this video, but point is it adds value in exploration, RPG elements, and dungeon crawling as well as the characterization of Pokemon. And so the next example we have is Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Coliseum, and Pokemon Battle Revolution, which was utilizing the formula that Pokemon brought on the handheld setting and applying it to the console setting. And in some cases like Pokemon Coliseum, it had its own storyline and its own characters for you to interact and explore. So it was its own RPG game in a sense of when it comes to Pokemon. And it also applied and it also had a much darker setting as well, even though it wasn't really further utilized in certain aspects. And there were also certain mechanics that didn't really work well. And funny enough, seemed to be applied in Pokemon Go, such as the Shadow Pokemon which was in Colosseum and is now in Pokemon Go. But point is, these games were trying to adapt the handheld and putting it into a console setting. And it was something that was really unique to the time. And clearly we have games nowadays, such as Let's Go, Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, and Sword and Shield, and the upcoming Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Those games, obviously, if it weren't for Coliseum and Battle Revolution and Stadium, we most likely would never have seen these games come to a console-like setting, if I'm being real here. And then we have Pokken Tournament. And Pokken Tournament is basically Pokemon's ambition of doing a fighter 3D fighting arena style game, but playing with Pokemon. Same thing with Mystery Dungeon with the dungeon crawling RPG. Same thing with Pokemon Unite currently with the MOBA setting. Pokemon Tournament was just trying to make a Pokemon fighting game and making it unique and applying certain elements that Tekken itself had and then using Pokemon for it. And that's something that adds a unique value to Pokemon because it shows that it shows a sense of like a battle, you know, from trainer to trainer and see how each Pokemon fights. And it kind of shows a real time aspect of, you know, Pokemon battles. And that was something really unique to see. For many of us, we only got to see the turn-based style of RPG that Pokemon's known for, but here in Pokken, it utilizes the trainer battle system and making it its own unique spin to it and adding a fighting game value to it. And that is something that is pretty incredible. And I really hope they 
further developed into that especially with the dx version on the switch i really wish there was like a fighter pass or something for it but you know sometimes certain ips can't be developed that well because ambitions but hopefully pokin deserves some additional love and support like mystery dungeon and the coliseum games then we have a two for one here and that is poke park and pokemon snap and the reason I'm putting these two together is because they apply a cute aspect to Pokemon. And that is, in the case of Pokemon Snap, taking pictures of your favorite Pokemon and seeing the nice scope of their natural environment and all that kind of stuff. And just seeing them interact through, with the natural environments that they are in. And in the case of Poke Park, it's similar to Mystery Dungeon where there are talking Pokemon. But it also has like mini games and it has like this cute factor to it even though there is a story involved and all that kind of stuff. Point is... These games build a nostalgia factor and in the case of Pokemon Snap, I'm so happy that they did new Pokemon Snap because they realized how much love and passion many people had for the original back in the Nintendo 64 days and so they wanted to bring that back for people and I love how they're updating it for free. You know, Mew is a free update, there is no DLC or there's no expansion passes compared to Sword and Shield but that's for an entirely different discussion. Pokemon part of Pokemon Snap add a cute value to Pokemon. They add a mini game factor to it. They provide a leisurely walk in terms of exploring Pokemon, exploring the Pokemon world, and just having fun with it for an hour or two without the need of grinding, without the need of RPG, without the need of all that jargon being thrown at you. You just take pictures, you just do mini games, all that kind of stuff, and I love it because of that. And then finally, and the most ambitious one aside from Mystery Dungeon, and the one that I would like to see make a comeback as well, is Pokemon Rangers. And Pokemon Rangers is basically applying the same aspects of Pokemon, but it, using it in real time. And even though these were games that I never really played and I would like to play sometime in the future, I still enjoy the ambition they brought and the sense of adding more value and also a darker story in terms of the Pokemon world and it was something that I would like to see be more exp like explored and developed and I hope in the case of Pokemon Legends they do something to that but that's for an entirely different discussion and that's I just hope that they, they Game Freak reminds themselves that there are certain games like Pokemon Rangers that deserve a little bit more of a development and deserves a little more time to be brought back to the spotlight similar to how Mystery, Mystery Dungeon did with the remake of the Rescue Team C series. At the end of the day, what is certain here with all of these spin-offs or any spin-offs in general, whether it's Pokemon, Mario, all that kind of stuff, spin-offs tend to be more ambitious. They tend to apply new sets of formulas and gaming mechanics that normally the mainline titles would never really dive into or never really fully develop into as time goes on. And in the case of Pokemon here, we see this with Mystery Dungeon, we see this with Pokemon Snap, Poke Park, Rangers, and all other spin-off series that I may have not really dived too much into because I don't have much recognition for it. I don't really have much, I never really interacted with those games, all that kind of stuff. But the point still stands in the case that they were ambitious. I'm sure those games are well known to certain individuals compared to other games but the fact that these are spin-offs they don't really need to have a set formula they have to have this sense of experimentation they have to figure out what it is they want these spin-off games to be and in some cases it works other cases it doesn't but the fact that they're ambitious is what makes them work or not work to some capacity here and i really hope with game freak they understand that with games like Mystery Dungeon, and more specific, Mystery Dungeon. And hopefully I make a video dedicated specifically to Mystery Dungeon because this needs to be said for many people that grew up on Mystery Dungeon. Mystery Dungeon was a good concept and deserves a lot more development for it. I don't understand why it was simply stopped in the 3D, 3DS era. And the same thing is said with all the other spin-off games. As well, 3DS, Wii U era, all those games seem to have just stopped. Even though there are spin-off games of Pokemon today, like I said with Unite, Masters, Go, all that kind of stuff. I, I want Game Freak to understand that there are other games that were really good for their time and they deserve to be better for today. But that's for an entirely different discussion. Let me know in the comment section down below 
which one is your favorite spin-off series whether you agree with this statement or not uh whether or not game freak should also develop further the mainline series all that kind of stuff leave it in the comment section down below i love reading what you guys have to say i love discussing with you guys all that kind of stuff that's what the comment section is for for a reason at least that's how i see it but you know i like to end the usual stuff keep being awesome keep spreading love and kindness to the world i know you guys can and i know i can as well so let's make sure to at least do one act of kindness each and every day and keep improving by one percent and i know you guys can by improving by 1%, you can go a long way each and every day. So make sure to do that as well. And buy a Cafe Gracia mug if you haven't already. Uh, make sure to buy one. It really means a lot for me. If you get one of these amazing mugs today, it shows the support for the channel, all that kind of stuff. So link will be in the description down below for that kind of stuff. As well, all previous videos, they'll be there as well. And know that I love you guys forever and always to 120. And I hope to see you all in that next amazing marvelous spectacular brilliant shining and sexy video any minute now any second now oh oh yeah yes uh hello 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 yeah yeah i'm still here i'm still here now. uh I i've been waiting for almost an hour now so can, can mr ishihara uh come to the phone no, he can't. He, he can't come to the phone. Oh, can, can you at least send him a met? Hello? Hello? Are, are you still there? Hello? So did they answer? Did they answer? Well, about that. Come on, you can tell me if they didn't answer or not. It's okay. You don't have to lie to us here. Shut up.